I've been working on the blocks that go between the rafters. These are the, the one by that uh, slides down in the little groove that I cut with the router on the sides of the rafters. And I was able to just slide them in and I nailed them from the inside using my finished gun. I've got a nice snug fit everywhere. This is on the outside. It may take a little time to cut those with the router. Of course, you have to set your guide up there and screw it down, make sure you've got it right. But the time that I save up here with these blocks, it's well worth the effort and the time that it takes to set up on the horses, the saw horses, and just take a router and cut a three quarter inch wide dado down through there on the side of it. And I can just slide these blocks right straight down and anchor them and I don't have to worry about ever coming back and trying to fit anything in there. The decking will come right up over that and that right there will be right up against the, the bottom side of the of the decking. I've got some uh, V-edge tongue groove 1x6 that I'll be using for the roof decking. It'll all be exposed. Now this area right here, I will come back after the, all the electrical is done and I'll fill this with insulation and I'll put another board similar to this on the inside to cover up the insulation. And that will be a board that I have to fit. I'll have to scribe fit it in there and it'll just be some trim work that I'll be doing. But getting this one in, I feel like is critical to make it so much easier on yourself. Okay, I'm gonna to try to stand out of the way here. I've got a groove that I cut down through on the inside face of this. Uh, this board has got a pretty good cup in it this way and when you do that you can give it a little bit slack this is nothing really structural it's just to keep air birds bugs critters from coming through this area right here and it really doesn't weaken the board because it's it's up snug and in these grooves here so i'm going to try to stand over here get this started down in there I made me a little, I'm not sure what you, something to hammer on, I'll put it that way. I just cut a 45 on one by it and screwed it to a, another piece to catch it. And I can hammer on the top side and tap that down in there and it doesn't slip off. Just kind of move back and forth with it just a little bit. Now I can shoot the nails in it. Tap this one back up just a hair. Okay. Okay, that's got it. Okay, I've got all the blocks in and I'm ready for decking. I started putting the decking on the roof of the cabin and I'm using a one by six tongue and groove V edge, which is seen on the underneath side. That's what will be visible. And I started down here and put on all that I could reach from working off of the scaffold down there. And I really didn't want to get up on the roof because I'm working by myself. And so I'm, I'm working from the inside. I've got a full floor up here to walk on. And so I can work in between the rafters. I'll have to kind of watch so I don't bump my head weaving in and out. I've already put a couple pieces up just to see how easy it was going to be to uh, do this from the inside. So I'll just keep the camera going and you can watch me work for a while.
got all my paper, tar paper on and it tacked down. I was working pretty feverishly trying to get this decking on and get it covered up. We had storms coming in. I'm up here just checking to make sure everything's still okay. And it seems to be, you can see in the video, I was able to put a big part of the decking on from the inside standing on the floor up in the loft area and on the side that i'm standing on i was able to do the same thing up until i got about 30 inches from the from the peak here and i had to uh, rig up some tow boards and finish it up from actually being on the top side and uh, put my last uh, two runs of tar paper on so now we'll go back down and look inside and see what uh, what we've got down there and what it looks like after the uh, torrential rains that we had yesterday I wanted to, to check and make sure that my tar paper did what it was supposed to do. So far, I don't see any places where water has come through, which I'm very thankful for that. I like the way this tongue of groove V edge looks on a ceiling, or in this case, it's the roof and ceiling. The blocking that I put in, I was happy with the way that looked even after the decking was on. Now, this is one of those situations where I'll only get to be able to enjoy the way it looks before it's covered up. That's kind of the way it is on some of the things I do. I just enjoy how it looks before something else goes over it. But it worked out well, and I think that will keep any birds or squirrels or any kind of critters from coming through there. I'm happy with the way these hanging scaffolds worked. I could stand right along the edge and reach up a little over three feet on the roof. I'll leave these up until I get the metal on. I'll work the fascia boards off of this scaffold on the front and the back. I'm getting ready to put the sub rafters or the secondary rafters on, on the roof. I've got my lines snapped up there. I'm screwing these rafter tails into the sub fascia with some three inch torque screws on the layout over the rafter tail and I'm driving the, the pole barn nails in. Pretty good lick to try to drive those in. I pre-drilled my holes on a layout of three feet from the bottom, six feet, nine feet, and 11 feet up at the peak. So that helps quite a bit in being able to drive these. They've got a, a ring shank and those would be hard to ever pull out of there. And they are six inches long. So they're getting a really good bite on this. They're actually pulling these down tight against the decking or against the tar paper that's on top of the decking. I don't have to worry about these ever getting loose. They're there for good. I'll set you up here and you can help me drive a few of these in. making sure that I'm keeping all these rafters on the line. It's like things to be running straight for me. I started putting the lathing up, which is some uh, band sawed two by fours. They're a full four inch wide. And they're, I think they saw them about an inch and five eighths thick, but they're all very consistent. So I can use these for my lathing and I'm putting everything on a two foot center. But what I'm actually doing when I get this lathing on, I'm building me a ladder. And I can just scamper all over this roof. And as I go up, I'll be able to uh, put the pole bar nails in every three feet and uh, have that secure. Well, I was able to get all the lath on the front side. There's eight runs. I like to put two runs at the peak to be sure and have backing on the underneath side when I put the ridge cap on. So what I'll do next after I get the other side is to... Uh, trim the ends off. I'll be able to square this up so when the metal goes on it, it fits nice. I think I'm going to call it a day. It's getting close to dark. So I'm going to go down and rest a while. Glad I got this done. <laughs>